Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Camilla and today I'm bringing you a review of Kella Bozuma Nelson's Open Water. If you've watched my two of my recent videos, one on the Costa Book Awards and my January wrap up, you'll know that this was my favorite book of January and I think it's a contender for potentially being one of my top books of the year. Already, I just loved it that much. In my January wrap up, I did mention I was going to do a review just for this book. It's one because I was running out of time. It was much too long. I did read 12 books in January, but I won't have that problem in February because we are February 11th and I finished zero books. So it was going well, as you can tell. But we're not here for this. <laughs> we're here to talk about open water. And yes, so um, I didn't want to spend all that time talking about open water on that and kind of diluted through all of the other book reviews and also I just wanted to highlight this as a video of its own because I truly truly thought that this was a masterpiece. I absolutely loved it and I would recommend it to anyone. For this video I'll try to keep it short. I will do two parts so the first part will be on form and the second will be on content. So I'll start with the writing and then go on to the themes and what it talks about. But first, just in case you don't know what this book is about, I would just want to read you the little blurb first. So, two young people meet at a pub in southeast London. Both are black British. Both want scholarships to private schools where they struggle to belong. Both are now artists. He a photographer and she a dancer. They're trying to make their mark in a city that by turns celebrates and rejects them. Tentatively, tenderly, they fall in love. But two people who seem destined to be together can still be torn apart by fear and violence. So this is just a small blurb on the inside front cover, you know, just to tell you a little bit about what is open water. I didn't know that much going into it. I know it was, I guess I had so, some sort of like love thing and also potentially heartbreak. I was actually really worried about the heartbreak part and I was wondering how hard it was going to be. But let's get to this in the second part. In the first part of this video, I just wanted to talk about form because I think it's really important to talk about it because this was really, really well written in my humble opinion. Anyway, so to put this in context, this is Azuma Nelson's first novel and he's done honestly a brilliant job. The way he writes is so evocative, so lyrical, like he uses wonderful, wonderful prose. One thing to note is that he uses the second person narrative, which is very jarring at first. I don't think I've ever read a book in the second person, so in the you narration, which was really bizarre, <laughs> but then you really get used to it and I don't think it's as terrifying as it might sound. And I think for me, it's because when I think about a you narration, all I can think about is those kind of create or choose your own adventure books from when you were young. You know, like, okay, if you want to do this, go to chapter B. If you want to do that, go to chapter C. And this isn't what that is, <laughs> which makes sense when you think about it. This is very much the you is the narrator and everyone else is she or he or they. What I really like is that the you narration really puts you in the shoes and in the mind of the narrator of the main uh, male character of this novel. And I just, I thought that was really brilliantly done. Another thing to note about his writing is that he uses rhythm really well. And I actually really loved it. And I think it really uh, helped you kind of with the pace of the narration of with the feelings of the character. It was just really brilliantly done. And that goes with like using short, fast sentences when the pulse is rising, when he's worried, when he's wondering things or just falling in love. And then he also used really long sentences full of melancholia to... Um, portrayed that emotion as well so he goes between them so well I thought that that was like a credit to the writer because that was a really brilliant example of using rhythm to make people feel like their character so I thought that was really nice and finally the last thing I wanted to say about the writing is that actually I wanted to read you a couple lines this is a library copy so I did um, put a few stickers I did start rereading it today <laughs> at lunchtime because I was like oh I want to do a video there's there's so many lines that I want to talk about but first we don't have time for that two you should read the book and three I need to return this book to the library <laughs> but anyway I started reading the, the the beginning so I have just three short quotes the first line is literally from page two 
and he's talking about how um, a gaze is being honest, like, you know, all of that. And he goes, the gaze requires no words at all. It is an honest meeting. And I just love that because I was recently, I think I was listening to a podcast. And they were talking about romantic leads, especially male romantic leads in movies and how they can make you feel like literally everything with a gaze. And obviously I'm not talking about the male gaze here and all of that, but just like the romance and the attraction and all of that and the openness and the fear, like everything in the gaze can be so honest and so like it tell you it tells you everything and i just love that he represented that so well in that one line it was beautiful another line it's a weak paragraph actually from page eight you can tell i've been rereading <laughs> besides sometimes to resolve desire it's better to let the thing bloom to feel this thing to let it catch you unaware to hold on to the ache what is better than believing you are heading towards love isn't that so beautiful? Like I just, it's well written and it's so evocative, like of, of falling in love and all of those feelings. And I just love it. And the last bit that I wanted to read to you without making this video too long is actually a line that, or a paragraph that I read to my husband. Cause when I read it, I was literally like awestruck by it. And that's because context here, like a little parenthesis to put you into context where I love this so much is that if you've seen some of my videos i've mentioned that i've applied and been accepted to do phd in september and my subject was actually to look at uh, the use of dance by marginalized communities that includes black dancers and dancers of color that includes trans dancers that includes um, refugees and immigrants so i'm very interested by all of that as a former dancer and everything so this line was just I was like, I need to put this in my thesis at some point, just credit him because beautiful. Okay. So this is the female character that he's falling in love with, talking about, um, she's a dancer. I like to move, she starts. I always have. You used to catch me on the playground, out dancing everyone. It's my space, you know? I'm making space and I'm dancing into that space. I'm like dancing into the space the drums leave, you know? between the kick and the snare and the hat, where the silence lies, the huge silence, those moments and spaces the drums are asking you to fill. I dance to breathe, but often I dance until I'm breathless and sweaty and I can feel all of me, all those parts of me I can't always feel. I don't feel like I'm allowed to. It's my space. I make a little world for myself and I live. Isn't that so beautiful? Honestly. Oh, this book, honestly. Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to read you a couple of lines because it's so well written, it's so beautiful. And talking about dance, we're going to get into the second part of this video, which is about the content. At its core, open water is very much a romance, but it's also a wonderful portrayal of being a young black man today, especially obviously in the context of London and Britain at the moment. What I love about this um, novel is that obviously it's literary fiction, it's romance, it's, it's just, it feels like so many genres and so many stories into one, but one very short, concise, and really beautifully crafted story. It's a window into the main character's life at this moment. I think this takes place over maybe a year. He, so first he meets this girl at a party and he's immediately attracted to her and you, you have a feel like she also does then they get into being friends and it kind of goes from friends to lovers and it's very sweet and beautiful the way that they get to know each other and they're clearly so close but they're not you know um breaking that <laughs> boundary for a while but that's really beautiful and that's like the first half and the second half is really difficult to tell you without spoilers so i will do my best because i want this video to be spoiler free um in the second part, you get a lot more of, like I said in the blurb, uh, you know, people may be destined to be together, but they may be ripped apart by fear, by violence, by discrimination, by like so many things. And in the second part, you get a lot more introspection about the male characters. I don't want to say identity, but it's more the perception that people have of him or of black men generally 
which is why like this is very much one of the themes it's allowing us to see how we feel and i realized like in the second half i kept being like really worried that something was going to happen because he talks about being arrested it was like stopped by the police because he you know fits the description of a criminal or whatever and it's just black man and you're just like that's so nonsensical but anyway i kind of felt this i was like oh my gosh something's gonna happen and i'm so worried and i won't tell you but obviously i was like oh that must be what this character or even this writer or you know black men generally must feel like all the time i think this book was a really great window into that but i think it subverts a lot of expectations that you may have but anyway something happens and the main character is enveloped by grief like completely and you see that that re the relationships around him fall apart because of that because he's trying to handle his own grief and he's not able to handle or keep it in and i think that at that point we fall into very much like mental health it i know it's not just black men versus all men sometimes it feels like in our society in our patriarchal society they have an issue with talking about their feelings and expressing um expressing them and i think that this book was a really interesting example of a black man struggling to come to terms with something that's happened and relationships breaking up around him for that reason because he can't share that vulnerability and yet there's so much vulnerability in this book and I think it's maybe because we're in the you narration but it's really really beautifully done and the second part was really gut-wrenching but also really beautiful I won't tell you how it ends but to me it ended in um, something hopeful and that's something that I really enjoy especially when books tackle heavier subjects that they have this little hint at the end because you want the best for the characters and I really wanted the best for both of um, the, the leads you know the male and female leads in this book and it's just really really beautiful and finally the last theme which I really should have talked about at the beginning because that's how I was transitioning into themes was the art you know when I was talking about dance and the uh, main man character is a photographer and he talks about uh, visual arts and he talks about so much music. So I hadn't realized actually until a couple of days ago where someone mentioned that apparently there's a Spotify playlist as, like that the author did associated with this book. I need to listen to that next time when I buy this book because I need to have it and reread it because I there was so much mentioned to music and I was like oh I was like trying to google some stuff but if you're trying to read <laughs> it's a bit difficult to keep going off to google what they're referring to but I just love the emphasis on art and it's such a celebration of art and especially black art so I think that was really beautiful to add that in as well and you know I've talked about the dancing already that was just so well done especially because the dance the dancer the female character doesn't really dance that much in the book but uh, when she talks about it, you really feel like, as someone who was a dancer, I was like, that is exactly it. And she, they, he's portrayed that so well. And yeah, I think it was a good time to just mention a couple of the um, lines, just because I thought they expressed it really well. So um, Yag Yassi said that it was a love song to black art and thought. Yes. Um, Mikesh Shukla wrote a beautifully, delicately written novel about love, about being seen about vulnerability and mental health. Caleb is a star in the making. Oh yeah, that's true. Actually, the being seen thing is so, so important. And I think that also ties in with the, I'll say the photography aspect, which ties in all the way till the end of the of the novel, like very last chapter, but also with the dancing when she talks about, you know, making a space for herself and living within that space. I just also feel like that has to do with that. And it contrasts that being seen with the being seen as a black body, as just um, an identity that you have no choice about. And I just thought that was beautiful as well. Yeah, it was a good reminder with that. <laughs> All right, um, I think this video is probably long enough. You probably know by now how much I love this and how much I'm recommending this. I hope that has convinced a few people to try this. Honestly, I hope you read it. I hope you enjoy it. Please come back and let me why you have enjoyed it or why you haven't i would love to know your thought and as always thank you so much for making it to the end of this video and for supporting me and hopefully subscribing to my channel <laughs> and hey see you back bye